I never did any form of work until I started dancing right before COVID. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when COVID hit, all the all of the strip clubs in New York closed down and me and Ruby were like, only, we couldn't tour, we could, there's nothing yeah. we could do. We, we could sell t-shirts, but there was no way of making money. And so we were just kind of like, let's make it. Mm -hmm. So that was my first foray into making like an adult video it was me and Ruby had, and mm -hmm. it was, it ended up being something that wasn't for her. Mm -hmm. I don't think she felt, great about like she just didn't feel comfortable in that and that's completely fine but it was something that was like I like this this turns mm -hmm. me on mm -hmm. making these videos and so like we kind of took our page down and then like maybe five months went by and I was like I'm gonna I'm gonna make a solo one and then that's how it all started wow we broke up and then someone was like you need an agent and I was like why not? Like, why not have a new chapter, try a new thing? Yeah. And so how did that go? Did you end up picking an agent right away or did you do any studio work before then? No. So I got an agent. That was the first thing I did. And I kind of just like was still living in New York, signed a contract and then was like, okay, I guess I'm moving to LA. So like a month later, I moved to LA. Like so just kind of like that. You moved to LA before you even did a scene? I had done two scenes. I came and visited okay. and did a couple scenes, met my agent in person for the first time, and then flew back and then moved like a month later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. If you moved before you even did a scene, that'd be like, I mean, definitely have confidence in your career. Not that you shouldn't, but yeah. <laughs> usually people come test the waters and they're like, okay, I'm going to make the move. So tell me what your first scene was like, because you'd only done scenes previously with Ruby and it sounds like it had been some time um, since that had happened. So now you're going to be doing like a scene on a set with a director mm -hmm. and like, you know, makeup artists and PA, maybe all those things um, and another person that you don't really know. So what was that experience like? My first scene was not that glamorous. It was like uh, they paid me an extra couple hundred bucks to use my hotel room that I was staying in. <laughs> and I did my own makeup, which I actually prefer. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of like a POV, like you're new in this. It's your first scene ever kind mm -hmm. of thing. And uh, then it was just over like that. And I was like, okay, I hope I did a good job. I didn't mm -hmm. know. I honestly, was, like even before coming in, I'm not like, uh, someone who knows a lot about the, or who knew a lot about this industry like I couldn't tell you the names of like five performers mm -hmm. <laughs> and like maybe the three I knew was like Jenna Jameson was one of them you know what I mean like yeah. it, like I really went in blind and I was like I don't even know how to be good at this but I want to be good at this because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm competitive with myself and I was like I hope I did good and then the second scene I did which was like while I was here for that short trip it was there was a makeup artist. It was a little bit, it, there was actually, and it was in a studio. And, <laughs> you weren't shooting in your own hotel room. <laughs> no. And Lee Alexis uh, actually gave me some really great tips on like how to, how to have on camera. So it was for browsers or twisties or? Mofos. It was for mofos. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, I mean, that, that's great to have that experience with, well, now Alo, mm -hmm. um, but previously Mind Geek. Um, so, the first, I'm just curious, the first one, I just wanted to ask a couple more questions. I mean, were you, I mean, you said you went in blind, but like when you went to go do your first scene, were you expecting that kind of scene? Like someone's like, oh, we're going to use your hotel room and we're just going to come over with a camera and that's it. Like, did it feel a little bit, you're like, this is not what I thought I was signing up for. It felt a little anticlimactic. Yeah. And like, I guess it was just kind of like, just do it. You booked it. Like I'm, I feel like I'm that person that it's like, if you book, if you booked me, it's going to happen. I'm not, yeah. I'm not a, like a pull outer, even yeah, if yeah. I <laughs> probably should sometimes yeah. like, uh, it ended up being fine. Yeah. But yeah, I, when they were, when they asked me to use my hotel room, I was like, really? <laughs> okay. I guess extra money. Yeah. Do you trust <laughs> your agent though? Um, yeah, kind of. Kind of. Okay. My agent is now defunct. Ah, 
Oh, it's that agent. It was, uh, yeah, I have a different agent now, mm-hmm. which I'm very happy with. That. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. The agency I was with at first is now defunct. And I yeah. left like six months in to the, broke my contract, bought myself out of that contract, which is don't do it, guys. Um, I don't have a contract right now. And mm-hmm. I love Spiegler. Yeah. He's oh, Spiegler didn't have you sign a contract? No, I don't have a contract. I wonder if he, I don't know if he does it. I don't know if he makes anybody sign a contract, come to think of it. I guess I've never asked that question. For those of you who don't know, Mark Spiegler is considered like the best agent in the adult industry. He's like the fairest, the most straight up, and he definitely won't hurt you or hide cameras in his house. No. Maybe um, he'll make you watch Cool Hand Luke. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely like, he loves to watch a classic film. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I, I guess I've never, I haven't really spent time with Mark outside of like, seeing him at conventions <laughs> when he would bring like pastries to set if I was shooting one of his girls that exactly. was always that was always the best he's like a wholesome grandpa he you is know what like I mean? a wholesome grandpa yeah it was like, act- with a little like he's all sassy wholesome grandpa he's, he's sassy, sassy. He's sassy. <laughs> that's for sure that's for sure so yeah this whole oh god this whole like buying yourself out of a contract thing oh god. it's such an interesting conversation because like I'm pretty sure, and I am not a lawyer, um, I feel like I should get a lawyer's steadfast opinion on this, though it would probably vary, but you can't tie anybody into a contract that has to do with work. No. I'm pretty sure that that's not legal. Like, they could not take you to court for that. The only reason, like, people were like, you don't have to do that, da da da. The only reason I did it was just fear of burning bridges. Yeah, I know that's true, because... You're right, because especially that agent would have, like, probably tried to pressure other directors and stuff from not hiring you. Otherwise, they wouldn't, like, let you book their other girls. Like, they use tactics like that. Yeah, for sure. It was, like, not cool. I got a weird vibe from the beginning. Yeah. Um, And I feel like I really did, compared to a lot of people that that had experience with this past agent, like, I kind of had a a good experience compared to most people. But I think it mainly is because I came into this industry at 30 years old. Mm. I shot my first scenes at 30. And then really when I started doing a lot of work, I had like just turned 31. So Mm -hmm. like I've been a grown person able to see like red flags. Mm -hmm. And um, I think a lot of not cool people will prey upon people who are younger, less experienced. And when they know that you're like, they can sense it on you. It's like yeah. they can smell it on you. Yeah. And when they know that you're like 30, 30 something, like you're confident, you have been through things, like they're not going to try the same shit on you. Yeah. No, predators can definitely like smell their prey. Oh, yeah. For sure. And if you kind of give off those vibes, they won't. And I scared my, like, I think I scared my last agents. He was like, they were intimidated by me. So <laughs> <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't try anything other than, you know, making me cough some dumb some, bills yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes in the end, it's just better to like, just pay that money so that you can move on. Because knows, it maybe does... I'll get it back one day. <laughs> Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year-long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better. <laughs> 